Hey y'all, welcome back to part four of this horse trailer renovation. So if you guys remember on part three, I was talking about how there was a bunch of water that was on the floor of this horse trailer on the interior, and this is where it was coming from. So all of this caulking on the outside of the trailer was completely bad and it all needed to be scraped off and removed and then re-caulked. So what was happening was the water was running down the sides of the trailer and it would actually go into the little cracks and then drain on the inside of the walls down to the floor. Now, if this were to happen in an RV, it 100% would have rotted out the wall, but because they designed horse trailers different than RVs, it didn't actually rot out the wall at all. All that water was just draining down onto the floor, and that is what completely rotted out this floor to begin with. So if you don't know, horse trailers are actually basically aluminum frames and they have furring strips on the inside of them, um, typically wood furring strips. So it's wood strips attached to aluminum and that's how they make the wall. So there's like a pretty significant gap on the inside of the wall. So when the water was running down, all it was doing was touching aluminum and it wouldn't touch any wood. So that's why I didn't rot out any of the walls in here, which is absolutely great. I'm just using a razor blade and a little scraping tool to kind of get all of the caulking off. I wanna pull out as much of that caulking as possible and get it pretty deep in. And now I'm just cleaning it with some alcohol before I go ahead and put new caulking on it. I highly recommend doing this every couple years because you'd be surprised how much the silicon can actually deteriorate over time. Um, and it's always a good idea to just check the outside of your seals, especially on these horse trailers where there's multiple panels meeting together. So this is just an outdoor, indoor, outdoor based silicon. You can use whatever kind you want. Just make sure it's a good quality and make sure that it's outdoor. And you can also use clear or you can use white. I just prefer white for this because you can still see some of the gunk that's on the inside um, from where I really didn't get all the way down deep in there because that sealant goes way down in there. Um, so it's just get a more cleaner look than if I would have used clear, but you can use either one. Okay, so now that all of my sides have been recocked, um, I can go ahead and start on the inside. And so if you're curious what I typically do, obviously other than cleaning everything up, um, before I start putting anything down, I did make sure this was waterproof. It actually rained uh, the next day. And so I knew I could go in here and see, hey, there's no wet spots on the floor, which means my... So now that I absolutely 100% know that there is no more leaks, I can go ahead and put this floor back in, which is awesome. Now, something that wasn't in here before, which I think is a little strange, was insulation on the floor. And I think that was part of the issue this trailer had, other than leaking from the sides, is because there was no um, like barrier or anything. It was just wood on metal. And so whenever the aluminum floor would condensate from the change in temperature, that wood would just soak it up. So what I'm going to do is put a layer of insulation down and then on top of that, I'm going to put a tarp material just in case somehow it does leak. Um, and then I'm gonna put wood on top of the tarp and kind of seal it all together in a nice little package. So I'm gonna start with the back of the trailer and there's this weird corner right here. So I'm just gonna use my uh, T-bevel gauge to go ahead and get that angle. That way I know my angle is completely right and I can um, basically just start from the back and work my way all the way up to the front. And I started at the back because I want to try to minimize how much I step on this uh, insulation right here because it's fine if you like step on it with like your whole foot but if you like kneel on it or anything like that it will leave little tiny indents and over time it can kind of just wear away so that's why I just start at the back and then work my way to the front um, it just minimizes how many times I step on this obviously I will step on it a lot but I'll just try not to like put my knee or my toe or anything like sharp to point like that into the insulation and this is one inch thick foam board that I am using. Um, I just like the one inch and that is what I had on hand. I don't think I had to buy many sheets of this because I already had some from previous trailers that I've done. Um, and so it, pretty much I just cut the shape out. There's a lot of like weird, funky vents and all sorts of stuff in this trailer because it's such a small area. So if you see right there, I am actually, this is the one thing that I use lipstick for because I don't really wear lipstick or makeup at all that much. So this is lipstick that I put around 
um, the base of the vents. And when I put my uh, sheet on right here, I can kind of just press it down and it makes a little mark where my vent or where my um, vent is right there and where the toilet flange is. Now, can you measure and be exact with it if you want to? Absolutely. But this is also insulation and nobody but me is ever going to see it. And I guess you, because I recorded it, but you can see how well this actually works and turns out in the end. So I, I, um, did the first vent right there first because you see it kind of sticks up out of the floor, the plumbing vent and the other one kind of reached on it, but not really good enough for me to get a good judge of where it exactly is. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the first one out. This is just a hole saw and I'm just lining it up. I did make it slightly bigger just in case I'm off a little bit. So after that I can go, um, I put it back on and then I pressed it down again. And now this is just another hole saw. This is not the exact size of the flange because I didn't have a hole saw that big, but I just wanted to get it fairly close. And then I can take my razor blade and go in and finish cutting the rest of the piece. Now I'm sure this is going to bother some of you just as much as it bothers me as I am working right now, but I should have taken all of these water lines out to begin with. I do eventually take them all out because I realized that one, it just bothers me that they're in the way while I'm trying to tuck all of this stuff underneath the walls. And two, there's no way that I could have kept them and got the plywood in. And so they do end up coming out. And that's that. So the first piece is in and it actually fits really well. I am tucking the insulation underneath the walls on this one. I do not tuck the plywood underneath the walls and that is because the walls are freestanding. So they're actually those furring strips that I was talking about earlier. Um, the weight of the walls is actually on the furring strips and it doesn't like come down and support the floor. The walls are not supported by the floor is what I'm trying to say. And so they're like freestanding regardless of what is on the floor anyway. So I didn't um, tuck the plywood underneath the walls. So that second piece is cut and as you can see, still driving me crazy with the water lines. Um, and this one was actually a little bit tricky and I ended up um, snapping this board because one, the water lines were in the way. Two, I ended up having to cut the water lines because if you, there was a, the hot water tank had a low point drain there, but it was a weird low point drain that you never would have been able to get to because it was underneath or it was above one of the tanks. And so I don't really understand the purpose of that because if you were to open it up and empty it, then it would have just gone directly on top of one of your tanks. And I feel like somebody did not design that very well. That's the line that I just picked up right there, as you can see. So that was, that was not a good design. I ended up, um, later on, I switched that to something completely different. So the reason I got hung up right here is because there was actually a propane line right there. So that's why I am measuring and recutting the line for the propane. I think there was also part of that wall was still angled in the back. So I also measured and recut the angle for the back piece right there. Cause I think it was, there was still a little bit of slant on the wall. Also, sorry for the rattling noises that were just in the background because my five-year-old came up here and wanted to color an animal cell. And so he had to get all of his colored pencils and his markers out of his desk. So that's what that sound was. Okay, so now you can go ahead and watch as I struggle to get this underneath the hot water heater. And I did actually break this a little bit, um, but it is fine. I was trying to keep all of this in one sheet, but it was really hard to tuck it under the walls on both sides, especially with the water heater right there. And as you can see, it just kind of snapped. Um, but I would rather have it underneath the walls than have it all one piece. So I'm not entirely too mad about it. And because it's just going to get covered up with tape anyway. So my main point in doing that was just for structure because sometimes over the years, if you put the foam down and then put wood on top of it, if it's not like in big chunks, then it can kind of wear away the foam more easily. So anyway, it's still in a big enough piece where it's gonna be perfectly fine. Okay, so I only have one more left and um, then I can start putting on the plywood. This is also, I actually did break this one as well, so. 
y'all don't come at me for that. But this one was so hard to get in. They were all really hard to get in. And just imagine how the plywood is going to be when it goes in. Because that was, that was super fun. So I really cut this one in half because there was two propane lines right there that I didn't want to ding up by trying to get it all in one. Plus, I still wanted to tuck it under the wall with the propane lines there. And there's a lot of stuff on that right hand side that it just it would have been a nightmare to try to fit that whole sheet in. Um, but I do end up fitting whole sheets of plywood in and I'll go through that in just a minute. Um, but for now, I need to go ahead and tape up all of these seams. And this is just a standard foil tape for HVAC. I'm going to tape up any spots, any cracks, anything else like that. Um, and just try to make this as insulated as possible. Now you don't have to buy any like special fancy tape for this. I think I use uh, something with an N. But I started using it. I think I buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot. I can drop it in the comments if you guys really want to know. But I started using this specific tape for horse trailers because it sticks to the insulation a lot better. Because some of the other brands that I've used, like when the, when it gets hot, the glue doesn't really stick. And then it all starts to fall off. And then it's just a mess. So I really like this brand of tape that I use. Okay, so now that everything is taped up, this is when I am going to start taking all of the water lines out because it's just irritating to me and they're in the way. So these water lines are basically just a giant loop around the trailer and so I made um, a cut on both sides for the hot and the cold and that section just came out and then the ones where the hot water heater was were a little bit more different, um, but it honestly wasn't that bad. You see how easily they all come out. The only thing is, is they were slid behind the propane lines. So I just had to be careful not to snag them on any of the propane lines that were here. There were actually two. And so once those are out of the way, this really frees up so much space in here. And of course there was still standing water in it. So my nice insulation that I worked so hard to make waterproof now has water on it, but it was fine because I dried it off. Not a big deal. So now I'm going to start putting in um, the plywood actually back up. I'm going to put in the barrier and then I'm going to put in the plywood, but this is just me measuring for the plywood. You see right there, nothing fancy. Um, this is just standard. I think it's seven sixteenths maybe plywood. And I know you guys typically see me use OSB, which is what I prefer, but um, I just decided to use this to give me a little more wiggle room in case heaven forbid something ever happens. I feel like this plywood won't soak up as much water as the OSB will. Um, but like I said, I put so many preventative measures in place <laughs> that I think the probability of that happening is so very incredibly low. And I know you guys have seen me cut panels, so it's really just a matter of measuring, cutting. I'm using my circular saw right here with my saw guide and some clamps. Um, and if you remember, I started at the back of the trailer and worked my way front when I put the insulation in. And now I'm going to start at the front of the trailer and work my way back because I want to stagger the panels. So I don't want like full sheet on full sheet on full sheet. Um, just to kind of give it a little more structural stability. And right here, I've just made myself a little template. This is where my propane lines are, and I'm just going to be careful. Um, I could have done this lots of different ways, but I really didn't want to have to cut and flare new lines for this. So that's why I'm just going to fit it in the new flooring um, and just make a little hole so it kind of just slides, uh, the, the wood will just slide up against it. And then I'm just cutting it out right here with my jigsaw, nothing fancy. Okay, so I put this next part in here just so you guys see that sometimes when I do things, I don't think things all the way through even though I try to. Because I had just cut this and I'm walking in here thinking that, oh, this is, it's going to fit. It's going to be fine. Like I cut it, I measured it perfectly, it should fit. Well, yeah, theoretically it should fit, but when you have all of this junk in the way, it most definitely will not fit. So that's where the water tank was, is where my feet was. And because of that, I have a water inlet there. I have my fresh water uh, fill there. I have propane lines on the other side. Like there's just so many things going on in this one corner that it just, it, it wasn't gonna fit. 
And so I came back outside. I took my uh, fresh water fill and my city water connection off because all of that stuff was just sticking out of the trailer. Uh, so that came off. And then on the front of the trailer was, um, it's just like another water connection, I guess, where you can fill buckets of water from your city water connection. So that ended up coming off too. And usually most of the time I try to replace these things. So they would have been off anyway. Um, but the problem is, is I really liked them because they were all metal and you don't typically find a city water fill. And, um, this front fill right here is like an actual hose bib and you don't typically find that on trailer. So I was like, mm, this is in good condition still. I'm going to try to keep it. So that was really the only reason I didn't take it off to begin with. I also need to go ahead and tie off all of this electrical because I just knew it was going to get caught. And I'm going to go ahead and do it for the rest of the trailer too, just to save myself some time and some headaches so I don't forget to tie up all of my wires later um, because they will get stuck in the wood. And then if you're either going to have to take the wood up or pull it back out. And I didn't want to have to do either of those. Okay, so here's that tarp material that I was telling you about, and I'm just taking it out of the package and spreading it out. I thought I had bought a 30 by 30 tarp, but apparently I did not. I think this is like a 20 by 10 or something, which I don't know how I could have made that mistake unless they sent me the wrong one, but honestly, this is where I was at and I wasn't going back anyway. So um, it fit with the exception of uh, the front part. There was like two feet on the front part of it that I ended up kind of patching in another piece in the front. You'll see that in just a minute. Um, but I did this because I wanted it to be completely waterproof before I put the wood down. So the wood is gonna go on top of the tarp. So theoretically, if those sides ever do leak again, it's going to go down onto the floor underneath the um, insulation that I put in. And if something happens and it goes through the insulation, at least there is the tarp here to kind of act as a water barrier. And so it doesn't ever actually reach the wood. Now I did not record putting most of these panels in because it was so obnoxious to get them all in. Like you see, I made this fit perfectly and it was still getting caught on that one corner, but I did eventually get all of them in without having to cut it. They're all full panels, which you'll see in just a minute. So now I've worked my way all the way down to um, the toilet area right here. And this was a little bit interesting and I could have done this in multiple ways. If I was gonna do it again, I think I maybe would have just taken the flange up and then uh, put it around the um, the inlet, wherever that, that thing right is right there. I, I don't know why I'm having a brain fart right now. But anyway, I would have taken the flange off, put the flooring down, then put a new flange on is what I'm trying to say. But I didn't do that. And I mean, this is, it's totally fine and structural the way that it is. And I'll show you how I did that um, in just a second. So if you remember, this piece was actually a corner piece, the last piece. It's got that um, weird angle that I used my T-bevel to just go ahead and make sure that I had the right angle. And then I also have a plumbing vent that's there and I also have the toilet flange that's there. So there's a couple things that I need to pay attention to when I'm cutting this to make sure that I get it right. So first I'm just gonna make sure that the piece fits. Um, and it does. So after that, if you remember correctly, um, I had the piece of paper towel that I kind of like circled the toilet flange on just to get the right size. And I'm gonna cut it out and then put it on my marks because um, I had measured over from the other piece to know exactly where those two lines need to sit. And then I'm gonna cut it out. And then I'm gonna take that cut out because I know it's the exact size of the toilet flange and I'm going to cut um, like another little circle on the inside of that out. And that is because um, like the toilet flange has some give to it, right? Like it can kind of go up and down because, you know, if the toilet is full, then obviously the flange isn't going to move as much because it's full. That's what I'm talking about right there. So I wanted that ring to actually go underneath the toilet flange to give it more support because if you're sitting up and down on the toilet all the time well I think the foam was going to deteriorate which was what I was worried about and so if you see right there I actually made two because I need a little bit more thickness on that gap to fill in the toilet flange so I took that and I just stuck it in 
and it supported the flange of the toilet against the floor. That way, when you sit on the toilet, the flange wouldn't just like sink in. Um, and I think it just gave it a little more structural stability. So it's still going to go underneath the toilet flange. The actual piece of wood that I've cut out is going to go underneath and hook into that. It's kind of hard to explain, but just know that this is just, it's how I did it. And I maybe would have done it differently than I did it, but this is, this is, this is where I'm at right now. Anyway, you'll see in just a second once I put that other piece in, but these are the other pieces that I've put in. Um, and then I didn't screw any of these pieces down. So I put them all in and they were kind of floating until I made sure they all needed to fit in case I needed to adjust something. But the problem was, is there were two tanks underneath this and I wanted to know where they were so I could screw the flooring into the ground or into the floor the actual frame itself. And so I actually went from underneath the trailer and I drilled pilot holes. So I knew where it was safe to drill because what I didn't want to do is drill a hole in my black tank or my gray tank. I had a pretty good idea where the black tank was because it was obviously where the flange was, but the gray tank was in such like a weird place that I just, I didn't want to take any chances. And it was close enough to the top of the frame where I 100% would have drilled into it if I had not made those pilot holes. Anyway, part five is coming soon. Follow along if you like.